There is a question that I've been getting on a regular, regular basis for quite a while now. And I want to answer it right now here for you guys. People have been asking me over and over and over again, why do I have mold in my propagation frame? And they're using the same totes I'm using. And they're doing everything I'm saying to do. But they continue to get mold building up on their medium, growing on their leaves, overtaking their cuttings, their cuttings are wilting, their cuttings are turning brown and dying, and they just can't figure out why. And I want to explain to you guys the three biggest reasons that you would have mold growing in your propagation tote so that you can combat this problem once and for all and make it not a problem anymore. So reason number one, too much water guys. And I did a video about this in the past. I'm gonna put a link up in the corner here to that video if you haven't seen it. I actually made it a couple years ago, but go watch that video and it'll help explain things a little bit, but you just don't need a lot of water. And I think people are over watering their cuttings. They're just putting way too much water on their cuttings. Cuttings don't need a lot of water. And I'm gonna try and help you understand this as best as I possibly can. And this is all, of course, from my own experience and through my own eyes. Everybody might have their own ideas, but these are my ideas and I feel like I'm in tune with these beautiful little plants here. And I understand kind of what they need and I'm not perfect, I lose some of them too, but I've been doing this a long time and I've learned a lot from them and what they need. But water, tons of water is one thing they don't need in the beginning. Now, here's an important thing that I've learned and at least how I see it. When you take a cutting, you've severed it from the parent plant. It doesn't have roots yet. It doesn't have roots that can actually uptake water. And most of these plants that we're propagating don't like to sit in soggy soils. If you were to take one of these plants, even a rhododendron like this, it's already growing fine on its own roots, and you were to set that pot down in a bathtub full of water and submerge that trunk up to maybe five inches above the soil level, the potting soil level, that trunk would start rotting eventually because it was never made to sit in lots of water. And that's the same thing that some of you guys are doing with your cuttings. You're taking a cutting, you're, you're snipping a cutting off the plant and you're submerging it in water, just too much moisture and it's just rotting or it's attracting lots of mold and it's rotting from that. But they just don't need lots of moisture. There just aren't any roots yet that can uptake all of that moisture. When you water a plant, those roots go to work at once to pull all that moisture out and store it in the tissues. And then the, the, the moisture in the rooting medium or in the, in the potting soil slowly starts to dissipate and dry up a little bit because the roots are pulling the moisture out. But when you water cuttings, that water just sits there and it just promotes rot. And so you don't need a lot of water. Another por important thing that I have learned with cuttings, I believe, this is my theory, the more you make them work for it, the better off they'll be. It's just like kids, man. When you're raising kids, if you make them work for it, they're gonna learn from that experience and they're gonna learn how to do whatever it is they're learning to do better next time. It's like the plants. When you take a cutting and you just use lightly moistened soil, lightly moistened, it forces that cutting to be under a little bit of stress and go, man, you know, I'm either going to make it or break it here. And if I don't decide to start forming roots, I'm going to lose my life here, man. And it puts it in a situation where that cutting has to seek out moisture and it has to come up with a way to do that. And the way it does that is through forming roots. And the plant intuitively knows to do that. It has the genetic code, the genetic structure to make those roots. And it will do that if provided the right environment. But if you put too much water in that rooting medium, if you put too much, much moisture in there, it's almost as if you're putting the, like you can take a cutting, try this guys for a minute. You can take a cutting of any plant, just about. Some house plants will do it just fine, but lots of cuttings, rhododendrons, any of them. And you can put it in a glass of water. 
and it will actually keep that plant alive for a long period of time. I've done this experiment myself. It will keep that little cutting alive for a long period of time because it will be able to soak up moisture, but that cutting doesn't have to work for that water. Now, some plants will form roots in the water, but a lot won't. And some, even the ones that do, sometimes take a lot longer to form roots because it doesn't have to work for it. It's just getting, it's, it's being given everything it needs in life and it doesn't have to work for it. It's like my little, my little brother down in Arizona. He was, he's in his 20s now, but he was four years old before he learned how to talk. And my mom went to the doctor and said, Doc, why won't he talk? And the doc said, there's nothing wrong with him. He's a bright little kid. He just doesn't have to talk. He's got two older sisters that do everything for him. So he points and it's given to him. He doesn't have to talk. It's the same way with the cuttings. Oh, by the way, hi mom, I'm doing okay. You said to say that. Anyway, it's an important thing to do with the cuttings as well. You need to put just enough moisture so that the leaves can't lose a ton of water so that there's some humidity built up in the chamber and the wilt and the cutting won't wilt and die, but so that the stem actually is forced to seek out other possibilities to keep itself hydrated. So I guess the rule of thumb would be if you can take your medium and you can squeeze it and wring it out and not get more than a couple drops of water out of it, you're good to go. I'm talking light moisture that's it number two you've got too much heat in that bin now this can be a tough one and it's just something you got to play by ear but if you're in the middle of summertime you don't need bottom heat i only use bottom heat on cuttings that i take in the winter maybe some in the late fall and early early spring and it just depends on the type of cutting semi hardwood and hardwood cuttings are generally generally the only plants that I use bottom heat on from probably the first of June or even sometimes in late May anything softwood that I'm taking softwood cuttings on through summer softwood cuttings basically so, some semi hardwood cuttings if I'm taking them in July but mostly softwood cuttings I'm not using bottom heat at all. Summer provides enough warmth, you don't need bottom heat. And so all bottom heat is gonna do is add a lot more heat in your propagation tote or frame or whatever you're using. And when you're combining a lot of moisture and a lot of heat, you're just inviting molds and mildews and all kinds of junk to start growing in there. It takes a certain amount of time for that little cutting to form roots. And when you're just pumping up the heat and you're putting the water to them, you're just encouraging lots of mold and mildew. And that could be one of your guys' problems. So what I recommend is the same thing I've been recommending from the very beginning. Find a place where you can set that tote or that frame that does not ever get any direct sun. I don't ever want to see that sun touching any part of your propagation frame ever. But... You want that frame, that glass lid or plastic lid or whatever it is, to get as much bright blue skylight as possible. But I don't ever want to see that sun touch your frame. As soon as that sun touches your frame, that heat is going to build up so bad it's going to cook those cuttings. So, what does that mean? You need to have the frame either on the north side of a tall building where the sun never gets to, or you need to build something with plywood, a lean-to, that encloses the sides and the, the north side of that frame or tote so that the sun never hits them. It's just really that simple, guys. You just don't want the sun hitting the frame. It's just going to get too hot and it's going to start cooking your cuttings. And it's going to invite all the mold and mildew and problems that you don't want in your propagation tote. Number three, there's just not enough airflow, guys. And so a part of the problem with these totes is they're all sealed up. There's no airflow. So you don't want to pack them too full of cuttings. At least I don't. I choose to, when I'm, when I'm working with my wooden frames, like I showed you in that video, and I'll put a link up here to it if you haven't seen it. When I'm working with my wooden frames, there's a slight gap all the way around the wooden frames that allows little bits of air to flow through, but it allows enough moisture to build up to keep the tutting, cuttings turgid. See, I can say it right, guys. Anyway, when you're working with those plastic totes, it's completely sealed and there's just not enough airflow. 
if you guys are living in a location where in my temperatures get into the 90s in the summer but if you're in a location where your temps are into the hundreds and even in a shady location where you're not hit, getting any direct sun that that tote is still building up lots of heat you may need to slightly crack the lid a little bit lift it up a hair like a quarter inch and put a little dowel or a little piece of wood or something in there just to allow a little tiny bit of airflow and then you watch it for a couple days and you see is all the humidity leaving the frame because you've cracked it that much crack it a little less just enough to allow a tiny bit of airflow to get through there but still maintain humidity and sometimes you got to watch these things for a couple days and work with them sometimes I'll crack it open a half an inch and I'll prop it up and I'll sit out there with a spray bottle for a day and every couple hours I'll go in there and I'll look at it and if a lot of humidity has dissipated I'll just spritz them with a spray bottle sometimes I'll do that all day if I see fungus or mold issues in a little project that I'm working on, sometimes I'll just take the lid off and I'll walk over every hour or so and I'll spray with a spray bottle and just let the air flow through there and kill whatever it is that's growing. So those are the three problems that could be big problems that could be detrimental to your guys' little setup. And that is too much moisture, too much heat, not enough airflow and I hope I've given you guys a few ways to kind of get rid of those problems at least taught you a little something about making your setup a little bit better uh, and more likely for your your little rooted cuttings to live to root and to grow on to healthy landscape plants so I hope you guys got something out of this I hope you liked the video please hit that like button subscribe if you want to follow along if you guys have any comments or you're saying Mike those are my problems comment down below I'll try to answer them a little out of commission but I'm gonna try and answer them anyway I can hunt and peck now on the keyboard but subscribe if you want to follow along and see more videos like these in the garden have an awesome week, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios!